our next speaker is Lucy Algar, who's a course leader for BA Theatre Design at Wimbledon College of Art. And her um, presentation is Drawing Performance, Creating Confident Collaborators Through Movement, Mark Making, Dance and Dialogue. So there's a film to show first. It's getting dark through that window. Have you, got, you haven't got notes to read? <coughs> no. Cool. <All right>. <coughs> Going to end up in dark. This is something of a circular eye. I studied my foundation at Bristol Poly, so this is the first time I've kind of been back uh, since then, so I feel like a homecoming of some sort. Um, okay. So this is a film... Should I start it? Uh, or do you want to press I'll, I'll play? I'll press play. You press play. Um, cool. Mm -hmm. Just moving around yeah, okay. there, it is there, yeah. Um, <coughs> so primarily I'm talking about the Drawing Performance Project, which I've run at Wimbledon. Um, in the, I mean, I've run workshops similar to these ones for a long, long time. I worked for three years before Wimbledon at Royal Holloway, teaching all the design in that drama department. And there, uh, you know, I was working with a lot of students who were, had lost a connection with drawing or were unfamiliar with processes. So when we were talking about spatial awareness and spaces, considering circular spaces to perform in square spaces, you know, were we working with traverse stages? So I was doing drawing, drawing workshops there with flour and salt and charcoal so that there was less fear around moving, changing, constantly re-evaluating the drawing and pushing the ideas away. So since I've been at Wimbledon, I've been working with the, I mean, course leader for the theatre design course, so really considering educating young performance designers, so spatial awareness, connectedness with the, with the body. Drawing is absolutely central to all of my work, has always been, I've drawn dancers for a long time, and... I work with dancers designing shows, for, particularly with a choreographer called Kirill Berloff. He works with me on, these, um, on all the drawing performance projects, and we, sort of, we share we to and fro with the baton, who's leading the workshop. And I've tried making this work with other choreographers, but it's, that's our work, and we will be presenting work at Rombert at the Playground event on the 29th of November. So this is an ongoing practice. Um, but this is a three-minute long film of uh, the drawing performance project that we've been running at Wimbledon. Um, in 2018, I was lucky enough to get funding from the UAL Teaching and Learning Fund. So um, very many thanks to them to sort of how I've been able to make this happen. <laughs>
So you'll see with those workshops, it's really, uh, we have huge paper, there's lots and lots of mark making, fantastic dancers. The funding to work with these dancers is, you know, it's really core to the project. I've got a great group of dancers that I'm working with all the time in my own practice. So to have Kirill there, Chihiro Kawasaki, some amazing practitioners, most of my students, some of which I suspect come from Simon's <laughs> course. I know one who I now have tweaked where she's come from, um, who is brilliant. Uh, thank you. This is brilliant. We want more. Um, but uh, most of them have never been anywhere near a performer of anything like that. You know, being close to performers, working with that level of discipline, that level of practice, is just a huge privilege. Um, and so, and, and uh, yeah, just working so closely to those performers is just hugely informative. It's so evident that, well, the next slide will explain, you know, one of my, you know, embodied understandings. I, we, you know, the practice of a theatre design is often to make a scale, 1 to 25 model. That is still the norm to hand over. If you're working at the National, you will be expected to hand over a 1 to 25 scale model. My students are brilliant model makers. But they also need to understand right from every, from their fingertips, toes, every part of their body, how, how much space does a performer need? Is it an intimate moment? Do they need to be close together or far apart? I can't really teach that understanding without them seeing performers in a space. And it's so close to my own heart that, you know, that's what I've been doing. So embodied understandings of what, how much space a performer needs, how are they going to evoke that emotion. So pr pr the main thing is step away from the desk. So we do still have desks within our, um, our studios, but... Also, we need these other elements in their education to ensure that they are really aware that every model they make is going to be inhabited by performers. So this is where I come to draw. And Daniel Glazer, who's a neuroscientist, um, you've probably all read it now, but the notion that when you look at something, your brain accepts, if I'm looking at a tree, it's a tree, I know how that works. If you have to draw it, you've got to look at how does that branch... I'm, I'm speaking to the converted. You understand this. But explaining this to first-year theatre designers, you know, just this is why drawing is so important to me. Um, so this, I can't do this without um, being a practitioner. So my practice is constant um, and informs my teaching all the time. So this is um, my website. And then Kirill and I, there's a YouTube clip of... Um, our work, and that is well, that's a photograph from when we were artists in residence for the Acts Reacts Festival in 2017. So a lot of my drawing with and around dancers, a lot of the work that we do in the drawing performance workshops is very messy. The drawers will get very, you know, they're dancing as well. They get, that's fine. They get filthy. We all um, do. So this again was when I was, we were working. Um, at Acts Reacts in 2017 in that lovely gallery space at Wimbledon. So I was primarily making all of these huge drawings, but you can see the one on the floor, which was all made around... Um, uh, we had cameras above, all made moving around Kirill's movements. And I would never, ever have come up with that drawing without being working around and next to a dancer. Um, it also absolutely... Because all of my practice, once I'd studied theatre design... I, when I was allowed to do work placement, I always worked in the paint shop at Birmingham Rep. So I'm a painter, I'm a scenic artist, and I paved my way working on commercials when I was designing small theatres. So for me, when I'm dance, working with dancers, um, that practice of being a scenic artist is kind of, it's in me. Um, so, but I can't stop. I have to keep doing this. So this is um, last week, uh, working with Chihiro, who was in a show called Nutcrusher at... The place, so London Contemporary Dance School is um, one of my very, very favourite places in the world. So working there with um, Sung Im Ha was the choreographer of the piece and um, uh, Chihiro, my friend and dancer who works with the lot on drawing performance, was performing in it. So I documented that performance and this enables me to ensure... I mean, one of the ways I'm always talking about this to my students is that you've got to have, when you're meeting collaborators as a theatre maker, as a performance maker, your bowl of ingredients needs to be full so that you can extract whatever it is that you... So I can't have a full bowl of ingredients without constant drawing practice. You know, just in that body, knowing how gravity's falling, knowing what tension is in 
that calf muscle. I need to know that stuff. Um, and I need my students to understand that when they're designing costumes or um, because all of my third year students, ever since I've been at Wimbledon, um, I've, my obsession is every third year must make a live show. So we have collaborative working um, relationships with London Contemporary Dance School. So those shows will be at the place on the 12th and 13th of December. We do another project with the dance department at Middlesex University, a very important project for me with the Lyric Theatre in Hammersmith, so Evolution. And um, the last one this year is with Italia Conti, so musicals. So we've got a really broad range of live projects. And this, every student in the third year will have done lots of drawing on the way to those live projects. Um, so drawing and performance design, what's the connection with theatre design? So Alison Chitty had an exhibition, very famous theatre designer. Her exhibition was um, at the National in 2010. And I love that phrase, drawing is my way out of the black hole. You know, when you're given a text, oh, God, where do I go with this? You know, Shakespeare, uh, huge opera, Janacek, whatever it might be. So drawing is her way out of the black hole. Um, and then I've just written a chapter for a book that's soon to be published called Leap into Action Performative Pedagogies. So Lee Campbell, um, uh, who works with us at Wimbledon, he has edited this book. And that's the point I've put there. Drawing whether analog or digital remains the core tool by which theatre designers investigate and reveal their ideas to their collaborators. And so enabling students to broaden their physical understanding and intellectual, intellectual knowledge of drawing remains a key element of their education. And here we've had discussions about digital and analog and so on. But it, I mean, within a theatre design practice, it's absolutely core that we are revealing our ideas through VR, through technical drawings using Rhino, Cinema 4D, AutoCAD. Drawing is absolutely fluid for us between analog mess and precision drawings, technical drawings. So if you're building, if you're passing over your drawings to a, a set builder, you've got to know their rights, the millimeter. So drawing as digital and analog tool is, is just, it's just what we do. Um, and it's been going on for a long time. I'm not reinventing the wheel. Oscar Schlemmer was doing this at the Bauhaus. You know, this is, this is a little note from his diary a uh, hundred years ago. So the, work, the man that you know, created the Triadic Ballet, um, this beautiful book, this is my own copy of this book. I love this book. Um, so representations of man will always form the great metaphor of the artist. I just had to put that in at this point, hundred years on, out of sort of respect, really, and just acknowledging that I'm, uh, this has been done before. Um, Alison Chitty's other comment from her book at Design Process, and this phrase, I, my students are now bored of me saying, clarify and investigate. It's central to what I, the way I clarify what I know and investigate what I don't. Um, my way of ordering ideas and the way I experiment and work my way through confusion and blocks. Um, it's, this is just, and I love this drawing of Alison's. This isn't necessarily, uh, you know, because as theatre designers, we're working to, uh, primarily to text, often to music as well, but we're responding differently each time. Her work will be different each time. So here, spatial awareness, uh, an understanding of, of line that might be blurred or thin or faint or hard or trace or all of those words that we love to use with drawing. But, and collage might interrupt. This, uh, there's a very a wash underneath, but I love everything that evokes about that drawing evokes about theatre and performance. Um, and the other person I want to quote is Ray Smith. So I cannot. She's um, a really big supporter of us at Wimbledon, and her most the associate designer who's working with her at the moment just uh, worked on her, with her on translations. Left uh, the theatre design course at Wimbledon two years ago. I'm very proud of Niall's work with. Ray um, and her support, as I say, is much valued. Uh, in the theatre, I'm always drawing and always quickly as a reaction, a direct form of communication of ideas within the collective process of making a piece of live art. Now, this is relates, I haven't got this as a quote here, but Ralph Coltai, the very famous theatre designer who died not that long ago, age about 100, he said, um, despite theatre being a collaborative effort, the designer is a very lonely animal. So often my design students actually don't want to find this notion that they're going to have to collaborate quite hard. They've been brilliant. I used to spend my teenage years redrawing Baxter's costume designs. Um, that kind of private drawing has to enter a public realm as a theatre maker. Um, so it's about the collective process of making a piece of live art. Um, 
This is one of Ray's extremely beautiful uh, drawings that she made in rehearsal for War Horse when she was designing War Horse. Ray has always also been an artist in residence um, in the Centre for Drawing at Wimbledon. Um, and we're very much hoping she might get more involved with what we did, but she's incredibly busy. Um, so this led on to Tanya, uh, and you're very fortunate to work alongside Tanya at Wimbledon. Our conversations, she will agree, were always, as we were walking to and from less, you know, studios, we never, ever managed to capture a moment, but those snatched conversations were very, very important. And in April 2016, um, I was lucky enough to have some money through study abroad or something that I could put into um, these projects. So I also thank you, Panelux Lighting Company, because they are the people that give me the huge colorama rolls for free. So sustainability, reusing um, already used coloramas is how I get the paper for these projects. Um, dance floor down, and all you know, obsessive about uh, not. I don't ever, I ever have practitioners in for free I pay everyone you know this is professional practice so I only do this when I've got the right funding so in there responding to um, the dancers I know one of the main things that came out of that session was the notion of trust so trusting your collaborators and the students had could not believe that two of the dancers had never met them each other till that day the way they were working so trusting your collaborators so that was one of the things that came out of that but it is about Using drawing to look at, at performers, all of that negative space, gaps between space, um, all of the conversations that come out of it. So following that, before, that move drawing performance in April 2016, we were then asked to exhibit our work at the Practice of Inquiry exhibition at Chelsea. So that was the first exhibition at UAL of teaching practices. Um, I had a, we, Kirill and I ran a workshop there. Um, with a massive range of students from across the university, business students, I mean, there's a really wide range. And this was uh, the responses at the you know, this is what came up at the end. And the phrase I'd already made in bold, and it came up this morning, collaboration with self, with others. With, and that was exactly as it was written on the board, so I've just copied that from the board. But that notion about you've got to work with yourself to work with others. So there's some really lovely phrases in there about intuitive, sharing, perspective, restrain, line of communication, um, which then, of course, relates to sight lines in theatre. So really important um, phrases there. Um, so Irena, um, one of our students at the theatre. So that was just a first year's feedback. Um, useful to speak with the dancers and looking at my drawings with them exploring each other's practice once everything is over shared practices conversations around this is we don't do this and you do that we're all doing you know this so often we'll we'll encounter phrases that they the dancers are saying let's try this again do it this way and they go oh we, oh, we do that you know and it's just like oh we're not doing different things we're all doing very similar things um and then javier uh, from ma painting we, we worked with a lot of the Fine art courses at Wimbledon, people will understand that the changes at Wimbledon are, uh, uh, well, change is the only constant, but I will miss my fine art colleagues when everyone goes to Camberwell. Um, I was able to draw and paint live dance, which helped me to understand how a gesture in dance can be translated into a gesture in painting. Um, understanding of how related both disciplines are to what is performed by a dynamic body. Um, i move on quickly. I have been very lucky, my work at... Um, when I was at Royal Holloway, I was in the office next door to Colette Conroy, who wrote the book Theatre and the Body. She was the first person that really helped me articulate my drawing of, and my drawing teaching practices, but my own drawing in relation to um, an academic sort of background, really. So um, that's a thank you to Colette, really, and go and read her book, which the foreword she's, is by Marina Abramovich, and has some fantastic phrases about performance. Um, I put that in because it's sort of celebratory, but the students looking up, absolute astonishment at what Kirill and Chihiro are up to. Um, so gratefulness to working with these amazing people. And they are so generous and giving of their time and energy. They, they love it. It's a big, big part of what we do. I put a little bit about structure. We all warm up. Lots of the, the first just go, oh, I don't really want to do that. No, no, everyone has to get in the space and, um, and warm up. And um, then, then just sort of, this is very basic, but sort of questions of, you know, draw in response to movement, move in response to drawing. You'll be amazed how many of them get up and, and actually dance um, and move with them and, and so on. 
um, moving in response to theme or words, phrase, hands. So um, this PDF, you know, people can have afterwards if you want, as, you know, have this as a PDF. So as part of the drawing performance funding, um, we were asked to, part of that funding was that you had to do this somewhere else. So we were lucky enough to go down to Bath Spa and work with some really fantastic students down there who, um, and Kirill and I were really keen to question choreographic practices at that point. Um, so this was all based on the word phrase. Um, and I hadn't, each time we're doing something slightly different with the workshop. So the word phrase is frequently used by choreographers and performers, but not really so much um, in the context of a theatre design project. But um, it was all about letting go of ideas, throwing an idea, you know, so the performers would literally there making an idea, oh, no, that didn't work, let's go again. Oh, no, let's go that way, try again. And each time I was asking those that were drawing to edit, to rub out, to redraw, so we ended up with this beautiful layer drawing. Um, you know, it's messy, and the dark, there's Rob on the floor. Um, Robert Lazar kindly documented it all, but a lot of them, uh, they were very uh, in the spirit of it, the students there, and we ended up with some really amazing drawings. Um, so that's some of the feedback there. Extending own body by visualising movements on paper. I like that one. Um, freedoms, connecting, identifying. There was quite a lot in that one about emotional experience, which was, I think that was probably because we had quite a lot more mature students in the group who were able to articulate that. Um, so we're carrying on. We've just, well, actually, I say the more mature, the, one of the best ones we ever run was recently at Foundation. So students who'd only just arrived. So there's Kirill upside down, students looking. It's all about observing you know, um, or constantly talking to them. And this is not about whether you're making this an aesthetically pleasing drawing. This is about communicating and connecting to other practices. Um, oh, and then also playing with materials, so bringing ink into it to define at the end, which um, changes the drawing enormously. At that, in that space at Campbell, you can go up into the gallery and look back down, and there were lots of responses about, oh, my God, the whole thing's a performance. They hadn't quite twigged that... You know, but the lots of them were just 18. So this is all really about discussion, opening up just questions, questioning movement. <coughs> As a designer, how fast or slow is the performer moving? Where are they in relation? So through drawing, we are getting to these questions. Um, intention, that's always been a really... Consider direction, gestures, and the performer's connections to each other. What do they intend? As a designer, how can you inform their intentions? How can you inform their use of space? Um, where, you know, where the placing of objects on a set, will you be enhancing an intimate moment or quelling a, a moment? So questioning. Oh, and this lovely... I've been really lucky to go to lots of Akram Khan's... Um, well, a fair amount of his rehearsals. I'm just hearing him talking with a dramaturg. Show me the spacing. And then you just go, go further back, right to the edge. Then you have somewhere to go. And so in terms of drawing, that told me lots um, so that's been a so questioning materials we recently um, did a big workshop at Wimbledon I think that was the 18th of October with first years and third years um, using willow that I'd grown on my allotment so I was really happy to questioning materials we were drawing willow charcoal and moving willow through the space um, and then sometimes industrial objects so because of all the third years going and working on a lot of dance projects live projects questioning materials questioning costume um, again that's the willow but also playing with costume drawing them performers when they're in costume that was an enormous there was, these were costumes from Thropney Opera our first year costume design project so they've that's Mr Peachum with a huge head we made for him um, nearly there I promise Lucy I'm not going home um, so <coughs> the notion that we're through drawing I'm enabled to question <coughs> shared practices and processes um, Rob Howell, who um, he and I trained together at Birmingham on the theatre design course there, he, he's designed Matilda, and he says to be a theatre designer you need to be messy and precise. Again, that's one of the phrase. my students know that I repeat that phrase, but I still think it's really central to our practice um, and something that has helped me actually make these workshops. So Alison Chitty, clarify and investigate. And Peter Farley, my um, recently retired colleague at Wimbledon, 
define and redefine was one of the phrases he used of the Yolanda Sonnebend's work. So her work as a fine artist in the National Portrait Gallery, but she taught me um, at Birmingham, and she her costume designs are absolutely exquisite, but she would start with a huge pile of paper and draw and redraw and redraw. Um, and then borrowing phrases from choreographers such as Jonathan Burroughs, um, choreography is a negotiation with the patterns your body is thinking. So relating that to drawing and just questioning. And, and for some of my students, this might be about helping them define a research project. So um, when they, some of them that might be moving on to MA. So constantly helping them understand that we are educators, we are practitioners, and we're researching as well. So this is, in some way, it sometimes helps them to understand that. So there's just all a pile of us at the end of a recent workshop at Wimbledon. There, I'm using it also to bring a group of students together. We had a lot of fun that day um, with those first years. So that's just very recent, and that was a lot of fun. Um, so further information, this, this will be published very soon. So Lee's book, Leap into Action, Critical Performative Pedagogies in Art and Design Education. So please have a look at that book. And chapter 13 is mine. Um, more on my Instagram is the bottom one and the theatre design one there. Um, look us up. And then Pip's comment is my last slide. And I'll leave you to read that. So thank you very much.